Imagine that you live in a house and things in that house are done a certain way. And then there are also many houses. Some houses may do things very similarly to how you do things and other houses do it drastically different. Generally, if you think to real life, when you go from one house to another and you see people do different things, you're kind of like, eh, that is cool. Or you're maybe like, eh, uh, that is weird. I'm not going to be doing that, right? So you can pick and choose, you can adapt and you generally intermingle houses and cultures, etc. In the software engineering world, people generally just get married to one language and they don't intermingle with other languages. They don't travel to other houses. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And the house that we're going to be traveling to is called Unison. We're not going to be doing anything too complicated and you don't need to do anything too complicated in order to try to gain some kind of experience from another programming language and how you can take that knowledge and really try to spark innovation in your own programming language or in your own field or in your own projects that you're building or what kind of projects you're going to be building. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this video format. Also, don't forget to check out the description. If you would like to see me explore these languages live, you have to follow me on Twitch. That is where I do this kind of stuff. I also have a C-sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C-sharp as I do, highly recommend you check it out. So let's go ahead and check this out. The example that we have over here is console right line. Obviously, we don't want to do anything like that. Let's say that we have a word. And by the way, this is still C sharp, right? So we're just going to go through the motions of C sharp. We're going to have a word like yes. And we want to check if this word is indeed yes. So perhaps we will create a function like is yes. We'll have a string parameter and we're going to compare this parameter to a word like yes. Then we can have console right line and see if indeed this function works right or we can have a different project which is going to try to execute a unit test uh, let's uh, then run this application and we see the obvious result of true how about we kick it up a notch and we say we want to create a function that is going to create functions that is going to allow us to compare words so is yes should really become a variable where let's say this is is yes where we can say that something is a word where we're trying to compare it to the word yes or for example something like this so then in the end when we call is yes on this this should return true as well uh, let's comment this line out we will create a function is word we will still accept a string of word and let's rename this variable to yes like yes place this over here this should evaluate to a function that is going to take some kind of string and compare that string to the word. This is going to return us a function of string as input and boolean as output. And there we have it. So if we rerun this application, we're going to see true. If I want to see this against something like no, this should output false. And this is going to be it for the example, we're now going to try to replicate this in unison. So I haven't created anything, but let's say that this is going to be a unison app. And if you've never seen the syntax for Haskell, that's what this syntax is going to look like. So we're going to change the directory into unison app over here. I'm actually going to drag this down. And the way that unison works is a little bit weird, very unnatural to a C sharp programmer. And if you have ever experienced small talk, it's more like that. But anyway, we're not going to be dwelling deep into all the intricate de details of Unison. We just want to get an idea for the language. So instead of doing .NET run, we kind of have, let's say, an analog of .NET watch, but instead it's called UCM. And what this does is it watches a folder and this file. So for example, if I define a variable like, yes, I want to do something like this, uh, though I don't need the semicolon and I don't need var, I just say that yes exists, okay? It's going to give me some uh, prints out here and it's just going to say, oh yeah, I seen that you've defined this and this variable as a constant 
you can type a command add and when you typed in UCM, what you really did is you connected to a server. That server is essentially a running .NET application, like .NET run. Imagine you just put .NET run and your application runs and you can put changes into it. It compiles to your IL code and the application just never stops running. So that server never stops running. When you type in add, you're essentially either adding objects, adding classes to it dynamically, and it has its own Git history where you can say, I want to add this class. I want to remove this class. And it's a live environment that you essentially build up and it's safe to a file and you can ship it and so on and so forth. So that's the little preview of the UCM and what is actually running in the background over here and the text that you're seeing over here. Uh, while this thing is connected and is observing our file over here, I'm not going to be interacting with these commands. I just want to basically go through this development process where this is really a scratch, scratch pad. And once I have finished developing whatever I wanted to develop over here, I can just go ahead and ship it to let's say the UCM server, and then it's going to be available in my application. But nevertheless, if I actually want to see what kind of value yes holds, I just put this carrot and then it's going to tell me what value this holds. If I want a function like is yes, if things are simple enough, Unison will be able to think, figure things out. So for example, we take in a parameter like word and we want to compare it with a string like yes. Okay. So looks like it has managed to well figure, <laughs> figure what these things are. If I type out is yes, it's going to tell me what the signature of the function is. And then if I want to maybe compare it to a string like yes, it's going to type out, it's going to tell me well true. And if I want to say no, it's going to say that it's a returning false. Now, let's say I now want to arrive at is word. So is word is a little bit more complicated because we are going to accept some kind of word and then we want it to evaluate to some kind of string and compare it to the word. But the string over here is really a parameter and uh, maybe it's uh, going to look something like this. Okay. And at this point, uh, Unison can't figure out what the types are, what is it comparing, etc. Here it can see a string and it can say, oh yeah, I can infer, infer that the word is in, in, indeed a string. So we have to help Unison with figuring out the type parameters. So the first parameter is string. Here we say text. Because this is very fam similar to Haskell and you just have to be familiar with the concept of currying, that functions really only have one parameter and then the rest of the other things are curried over. Uh, we're going to have text and text for the first two parameters. So what we're really doing is we're returning kind of like a function. And then in the end, we're going to return a Boolean expression. And all of the types start with capital case. So you can't say bool with lowercase. And this is really Boolean. Okay. So you can see how I was getting there, basically a live compilation or syntax verification of what I was writing. So anyway, now that it gives me my output again, uh, things seem to be working. So uh, let's check it out. What is word and let's maybe get rid of these because we're quite familiar with what those functions are doing. And by the way, if you want to comment something out, it's a double dash, same as in Haskell. Here we can see what the is word is. So we accept two parameters and then we are comparing it as text. Okay. Let's say if we type in yes, so we want to be comparing it to the word yes. And uh, this is going to return us a function that accepts a string, compares it as text to the word yes. Okay, so we can actually see the signature of the function that is being created over here. We can then create a variable like is yes. And uh, as you can see, uh, again, this is compiling if we do things like is yes, because this is basically just available over here. We know that this is legit code. So we can perhaps have this as a variable somewhere over here. And let's just remove this empty valuation here. And yeah, again, it just knows what is yes is right. So we can have it over there. Let's just have it dynamically because we are just basically testing if this code is indeed working. This is like our test driven environment, uh, let's say. Now, furthermore, if we indeed want to check is this comparing to yes? Oh yeah, this is true. And then does this compare to no? Uh, and this is false. All right. One of the more interesting things over here that I find is uh, this functionality right here. When I create a function 
and it is just telling me what the signature of the function is. If I want to do something like this in .NET, what I actually have to do is let's drop this down to a new line. I will mark this as an expression. We'll have to wrap this function over here and uh, quick fixes. I don't know any of the key binds in here. So is yes, uh, we will need to actually compile it. So like so, if we actually then want to be using it. So let's take compile over here, place this over here as well. We can then take console, write line, and the expressions that you have there to string overload is actually going to print out more or less for how the Lambda looks. Where in unison, eh, that's just the default. You can just see what functions look like. And another thing is if you want to be experimenting, what you're really going to be doing is perhaps you're going to have an XUnit project where you're going to be running unit tests. So if you want to see what the Lambda signature is, you have to fire out a debugger, breakpoints, wait till the execution gets there. And if you have just the console output and XUnit, sometimes it will, it will actually only give you the console output if it fails or you will need to run it in debugger without breakpoints and see the console output there. So having something like this amongst your production code, essentially logging just kind of mashed in somewhere in your application, it's not an ideal experience. You would much rather have some kind of scratch pad where you can just see how things are happening. And this is why I absolutely loved LinkPad. It is an amazing application. So anyway, I'll end the video here. Tell me what you think. And by the way, this is just the tip of the iceberg of Unison. I was just trying to highlight the development environment and what kind of innovations you can have in this space. Unison itself as a language has so many cool features that enables so many things to happen. It is worth reading up on this yourself if you're interested. If not, hopefully you understand what was happening over here. And if you want to try to improve your development environment, you can maybe try to simulate something like this. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you would like the source code for this video and all of my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I'll be very grateful and a very big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you later.